Welcome to Freedom Cast. This podcast was started by a dude buying and selling fitness equipment in his backyard. In less than a year, I quit my Fortune 100 job and started a fitness empire. I now interview business owners who have built businesses around helping others get healthy and active. It's fun, it's entertaining, it's informative. It's what fitness should be. Freedom Cast is brought to you by Freedom Fitness Equipment in Charlotte, North Carolina. Let's get rolling. All right, guys, we did it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Adam, for being willing to do this. Um, Adam, uh, Garage Gym Lab on Instagram and pretty much everywhere else you can possibly find social media. Yep. Um, so this guy does reviews and all things related to home gym, um, and he graciously uh, let me, uh, come down to his house and, uh, interview him for the podcast. And just want to say thank you for that. Really appreciate it. And, um, just wanted to talk to you about the, how this whole thing got started. Um, why you decided to do it, why you decided to, I heard from Massonomics podcast, you quit your job and got started with all of that. Um, how this all got started and yeah. then just a few questions about like garage gym lab in general. Yeah, sure. So, um, it all kind of started, I was going to create a blog about Microsoft Excel, actually, uh, several years ago. So I went down the path of like, I just wanted to do something on my own. Like, I was loving Microsoft Excel. I was doing real estate finance at the time. But the, the, the blog never really took off. I never even launched it. I wrote like 10 articles and was very gung-ho about it, but it just didn't feel right. So that was all back in like 2016. My wife and I had moved to a new house. And I had started a garage gym with just like basic stuff. I had a single squat rack, a uh, power rack, um, some, a bar, some plates, and a, and a bench. Um, and that was after I was paying for d two gym memberships. So I was driving up to Uptown, so like 45 minutes away, have training at the Fitness Factory, which is awesome. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's great. They don't have a shower. So I had to pay a second gym membership at YMCA, drive a mile down the road just to take a shower and then go to work. And then I realized that was not gonna fly. So that's when I started my home gym. About nine months after that, my wife went into labor with our son, our first child. And at the hospital, I was like, man, why don't I just start a blog about gym equipment? It's like something that I love. I've got a home gym. Um, I felt like it was an underserved portion of the market and spent the next few months learning how to build a website, writing a few articles, launched it in November of 17 and just I've never looked back. That's amazing. By the way, uh, uh, <coughs> did, I did a walk around tour um, of the, the gym that he has. I love, one of my favorite accent colors is lime green, so <laughs> I'm glad to see they're not the only one. Yeah. <laughs> it looks a little weird to people, but I love the color. <laughs> I, feel like it's, I feel like it's a color that you either love or you hate. Yes. I don't think there's like any middle ground. No, there really isn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this, is, this looks absolutely awful to some people, or this is the most amazing thing since sliced bread. Yeah, exactly. So. I did kind of leave it like a, an accent color. It's not yeah. like the predominant color. Right, right. right. <laughs> my wife threw a birthday party for me, and, and uh, I, it was a little overboard because I think every color was the lime green mm. but you know it works for some people i, I love it <laughs> i love it too um so tell me so you, you you got started into this and then at some point so you were working in what was the field again real estate finance real estate finance by the way what is that real estate finance well i was work not to get too nerdy but i was yeah. doing structured finance so commercial mortgage-backed securities underwriting commercial loans mm -hmm. Um, and then I moved into direct investments of apartment buildings. Okay. So that's a little bit easier to understand. The company that I was working for just bought and owned and managed apartment complexes around the country. Okay, gotcha. So I did that for like the last five years. And then in August, decided to take the, the plunge into full-time entrepreneurship. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> um, I, I know you said, you know, you already had a home gym. You really enjoyed that whole lifestyle but was your website picking up enough traffic where you thought oh i can make this a full-time thing or did you say i'm just going to take the plunge and see how it goes well covid really transformed the business yeah. um, just because people couldn't go to the gyms so I started buying home gym equipment um, at that point i felt like it was a permanent shift in the market mm -hmm. and while i do think that people are going to go back to the commercial gyms i don't think it's going to be near to the same level that it once was before 
Uh, so I think this is a, a paradigm shift in the market. I think you're going to see a lot more home gyms. I think you're going to see a lot more smaller private facilities and less Globo gyms. Um, so at that point, I was like, you know what? What better time than now? Like, my job isn't guaranteed in this type of environment. Like, why not just go at it and give it my all 100%? And we're in month eight now, I think. So it's pretty good so far. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, and you've got all the uh, sponsorships from people. How, by the way, how did that all, when you were getting it going, were you starting to reach out to, you know, Kabuki and Rep Fitness to to get started with the equipment, or are you just literally just having to buy and pull from whatever you had available? Yeah, so I had some equipment that I had just at the house um, that I wrote articles on, mm -hmm. and then I sent it to the companies basically, okay. and said, you know, here's a I wrote a I wrote a review on your bar. I mm -hmm. uh, just wanted to share it with you, and they were like, wow, this is really cool. So like Intech Strength, I, we talked about Intech earlier. I sent them a review of their original functional trap bar. And they were like, oh, wow, like, this is, this is awesome. Like, thanks so much. Um, you know, we should, we should do more reviews. And I was like, okay, like, cool. <laughs> sounds good. Um, and then, you know, Vulcan Strength, they live right here uh, or, or they're operated right here in, in Charlotte. And um, it's actually funny because I did, I had never done this before. So I was like calling, I was like cold calling basically and being like trying to introduce myself to these companies. They don't know who me, who I am. And uh, I called Vulcan and I was like, uh, hi, can I speak to somebody in your marketing department? And they just straight up hung up on me. Oh no. They thought that I was like <laughs> soliciting like business or something. And I called back and I was like, I, I, I'm actually, um, I'm an affiliate with you guys. Like I, I just wanted to reach out and say I reviewed something and to uh, introduce myself. And they were like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Fine, we'll let you in. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, I live like 10 minutes away. Yeah. So can I just come in and introduce myself? And nice. you know, so that's how kind of how I built it at the beginning. Yeah, that's awesome. <clears throat> um, and then over over time, so I, I saw on Instagram, you, how many followers do you have now on Instagram? Um, like, uh, 125,000 okay. roughly. Nice. So, um, did it take forever to get to that kind of volume and attention or was it just, I'm sure with the pandemic thing spiked obviously, Yeah. but, uh, how long did it take you to get to the point where, you know, again, companies are now mailing you stuff and, and you've got relationships all over the board and your following is, is going crazy. Or was there, was there a seminal moment where everything kind of spiked? <clears throat> Slow and steady wins this race it's uh it's organic growth the whole way so it was um you know this is three and a half years in the making basically um i would say before the pandemic i probably had i think i had like fifty thousand or sixty thousand, and then of course like it it spiked big time because of covid yeah. um and people were just hyper aware of gym equipment and by out of necessity really mm -hmm. um so that really helped spark some um but I mean, I just, I'm pretty relentless. Like I just try to stay consistent, try to engage with the community as much as I can and, um, you know, grow it that way. It's a very relationship driven, um, I don't want to say business, but growing a following on social media, I feel is all about relationships. So the, to the extent that you can create authentic connections with your followers, it's only going to help grow and fuel, hopefully, a lot of success in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> what's been your favorite uh, part so far of either being part of this community or just growing this to the point where you can kind of take it and, and do what you want with it? I would say my favorite part is just how positive and helpful the community is. Mm. I went into this thinking like, oh, there's going to be so much hate. like. Yeah social media is just riddled with, with haters. And I'm not a big guy. I'm five foot eight, 165 pounds. And I'm reviewing gym equipment. They're going to be like, Oh, who's this tiny guy telling me what I should buy when it comes to gym equipment. I'm twice his size. You even lift bro. Yeah. Do you even lift bro? <laughs> um, so that's what I kind of thought going into it. And it was the complete opposite. I think in the three and a half years I've done this, I've had like five haters like wow. on social media. And I think it's a real testament to the home gym community because everybody just wants to get better. Everybody wants to help each other, you know, whether it's um, a picking, selecting equipment or doing DIY stuff. Everybody's very supportive and very helpful. And that's by far been my favorite part and most 
pleasantly surprising part of all of this. Yeah. Uh, anybody that you've met either online or in person, um, celebrity wise has come along as a result of all of this or like, have you been able to meet like Chris Duffin in person or any of those guys? Um, I have not met Chris Duffin, <laughs> although that would be really cool. Um, I've met the Sorenex guys, of course, just cause they're right down the street. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's some, you know, Brandon Campbell, yep. you know, I haven't met him in person yet, but we talk a good bit on, on the internet. And so he's an internet friend and he's sort of a YouTube sensation. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then surprisingly, there are a good number of like professional athletes and former Olympians who have home gyms. Uh, so I've connected with, with some of them along the way. Um, Matt Barkley for, for the bills, like he and I talk a, a pretty good bit and it's kind of cool because they were obviously making a super bowl, super bowl run this year and he was getting some pretty solid playing time. So I was posting on Instagram, like my boy, Matt Barkley, home gym guy <laughs> throwing touchdown passes, like on my stories on Instagram it was kind of cool. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Um, do you, uh, when you're, when you're doing these kind of reviews and things, um, are you, is, I've looked at your channel, but most of it's done in here. Have you ever had any of the guys ask the, ask you to come out to their facility? I know with, um, who, who mentioned this, like some of the golfing pros with their new clubs and stuff that come out, like you actually have to go to their facility and it's, you know, controlled and the whole bit. Like, has anybody been really uh, sticklers about going out the facility? No, okay. no. And I found that, um, most companies want authentic feedback. They don't want to put you in a controlled environment, so to speak. And here we hand selected this one barbell that is more pristine than all of the other ones. Please come out to our facility and review it. It's not authentic that way. And it's not in their best interest because consumers are not going to get that precise or pristine version. So even a company, company like Vulcan, who's 10 minutes away, they don't want me to come pick up the equipment. They want to send it to me. They want it to go through USPS or UPS. They want it to be delivered to me the same way that it would be delivered to a consumer so that I can give the most practical feedback that I can yeah. and the most realistic feedback. Um, so I think that's another pretty cool aspect of, of the community and the industry. Yeah. Uh, what's been your favorite piece of equipment that you have either unboxed, used, I can, you can split it up by category. I know there's a thousand different things, but, um, you know, is there, is there any th- particular thing that stands out? It's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard because <laughs> there, a lot of this stuff is really cool. Yeah. I mean, my, my Sornex rack is really my pride and joy. This was the first like splurge purchase that I made. Yeah. Um, you know, this was probably a year and a half or so into garage gym lab. And I was like, you know what? I'm doing this thing. I want to like, I want to do it big. So I got this custom rack with like my branding on it and everything. And it's still just, I I come out in my garage and I'm just like, I love this thing. So this is, this is a great, it's a great rack. I mean, it's awesome. Um, and then I really enjoy the prime selectorized single stack. Um, just because it adds so much versatility. Mm -hmm. I think the people that I've asked, like, what's the one thing that you miss the most from a commercial gym? It's typically a cable piece. Um, just because it does give you so much versatility. You don't really see them all that often in a home gym Mm -hmm. and the cable pieces that are there, the more economical cable pieces aren't the best. Or if you have a pulley system like on your rack and it's got just a single pulley, you get a lot of sway. So there's like limitations to it. That's a commercial piece all the way, and it's just been a game changer for me in my space. Um, So those two really stick out to me, but, I mean, I love all my children. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Yeah, and you've got quite a few in here, (laughs) from what I can tell. Can you, uh, just for the podcast, I know I've got a clip that I'm going to cut together of an actual gym tour. Can you give everybody just a brief summary of what we're looking at here, even though you can't see everything in the video? Yeah, so I've got uh, a lot of barbells. We've got 46 bars here, um, a mix of traditional bars and specialty bars, the majority of which are just traditional straight bars. Um, I've got the Sornex XL Power Rack. Um, behind me, I've got the Rep Fitness PR5000. I actually had this as a dedicated second rack, but it was actually over there. It was just taking up a little bit too much space. So I actually saw Brandon Camel's um, video about converting his six-post rack into this, essentially a half rack. So that's what I did, and then I put my Squat Max MD belt squat, the Torque Fitness endless rope, and the William Strength 
hamstring curl on that, and it's uh, pretty cool. Um, and then I've got my selectorized piece, which we talked about a second ago, a full rack of dumbbells, um, a bunch of just odds and ends, medicine balls, slam balls, dumbbells, ropes, etc. more specialty bars, adjustable dumbbells, a rower, true form, trainer, I think I mentioned I'm going to get a true form runner soon, which would be really cool, mm -hmm. and then some other conditioning pieces, torque tanks, and the eccentric uh, K-Box. Okay. How do you like the torque tanks? Oh, they're, I mean, if you do a lot of like sled pushes and pulls, it's hard to beat. I mean, the magnetic resistance is awesome. You can adjust it on the fly. You don't have to worry about loading plates on it. And I mean, it just works great. Yeah. Those seem like a really nice piece of equipment that you can, well, and it's got the, you still have the ability to plate load everything too. You right? do. Well, the, the M1, which is the one on top, you actually kind of need to load some plates on there just to create some friction on the ground Okay. Um, to keep it firmly in, in place. And then the M4 does a pretty good job with that, but it's also got a carriage there in the middle that you can add some weight if you need to, or you can also optionally buy some plate pegs to accomplish the same thing. Okay. But you're not actually adding the weight to create additional resistance. You're just doing it to create friction on the ground so it stays there. Oh. Um all of the resistance is done through the magnetic resistance, which is like what you would find on like a Peloton bike. Right. So, okay. and the same thing for the, with the endless rope, uh, it's got, see that handle right there? Yep. One, two, three, four, that's built in magnetic resistance. One is pretty easy and four is extremely difficult. Okay. Gotcha. So. Uh, what were some of the companies that you got in contact with that started out or started up as a, was Torque one of them or were they already around before the pandemic started? Oh, they were, they were around, but they weren't participating in the home gym space. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So they, um, it's interesting, you know, I was doing apartment investing, so they did a lot of apartment gyms oh. and they've done some other like facility type work. Uh, but it's largely been in a commercial space. I actually reached out to them, I think back in like 2019 and introduced myself and you know, whatever. And they were like, yeah, thanks for reaching out. But the home gym space isn't really a, a opportunity for us that we see right now. So we're not really focused on that. And then, you know, fast forward a year and now they've got a separate website just for home gym equipment. So that's a real testament. Hammer strength is another one. Yep. So hammer strength has been around for decades Yeah. doing commercial stuff. They're now coming out with a lot of home gym stuff. Yep. So I just had a, a conversation with them two, three weeks ago. Okay. So they got some pretty cool stuff coming down the pipeline. You see Sornex, they're coming out with not a ton, but that's never going to be their core business. But they've got the um, the off grid rack, which is a home gym solution and some other sort of more economical pieces that isn't really in their core business line. Um, William Strength also in Columbia, yep. typically more commercial based. They're coming out with some, they've got a, in their facility now, they've got a garage gym showroom, uh, which is just showcasing and testing out equipment built and designed for the home gym in mind. So this is, a, this is what I'm saying. This is a paradigm shift. Companies yeah. are going to be doing this and it's not going away anytime soon. Yeah. Well, I mean, as soon as Hammer Strength, uh, so to me, Hammer Strength, Life Fitness, those are the, yeah. the premier. Is Precore doing anything like that? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. Um, but wasn't Precore just bought? Oh, I had no idea. I'm yeah, I think, sure. I think Precore was just was just acquired. So who who acquired them? Do you know? I thought it was Peloton. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, I'll have to check on that. But I remember seeing something on the newswire about it a little while back, several months ago. I did not realize that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hammer strength in my mind has always been you're only going to see that in a commercial gym. So I'll be yeah. really curious what they're coming out with a home gym space. Yeah, for sure. Um, like some benches, some racks. Mm -hmm. um, I know they've got some conditioning pieces that they're coming out with. So it should be pretty cool. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, because most of the time when I go to their website, it's like call us for a quote. And I think that's going to be $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> and it probably will be. Yep, yep. <laughs> That's well, great stuff. Yeah. Nice. Uh, family wise, um, what did your wife think about this whole thing when you started it up? Uh, well, so my wife was going into labor with our son six weeks early. And then I was like, oh, um, by the way, I want to start a blog about gym equipment. And she was like, right now? <laughs> she was like, what? Why? No, we just had a baby. And I was like, eh, it's not a big deal. Like I'm working 80 hours a week at my job. Like it's, not, it's what's another... <laughs> 10 hours. Yeah. It's no big deal. Uh, so I got a little bit of initial pushback, but once it's kind of started getting some traction, she was, she's the most supportive woman. I mean, she's amazing. Um, 
but I was like, yeah, you're, you know, you're not going to be able to park in the garage either. So, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But as it, you know, as it sort of started evolving, she kind of started seeing the fruits of the labor and, um, you know, now here we are and it's, she's got, you know, I have her full support. Yeah. Absolutely. Which is great. Nice. Um, <clears throat> and when you guys moved, um, uh, any any particular reason for the move, like other than just wanting to get a new place, was that, uh, uh, you know, was that tied into the business at all or is just the personal decision going down? Not, no, it wasn't like we want to move to have a bigger garage. Yeah, that's me. what it was, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it was mainly, we were in Charlotte. Um, we had two kids and we just were outgrowing the house. Okay. Um, and we needed something bigger. South Carolina, we're basically in Charlotte, as you know, yeah. but your listeners might not know. Um, it's close enough to Charlotte to be Charlotte, uh, but you get a lot more free money. I hear taxes are a lot better. Schools yeah. are a lot better. Um, so that was really the, the crux of it. And having a bigger garage certainly helps. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. This two car garage. And you said it, uh, it shares two of the walls with your house. So it's yep. a little bit warmer for, you know, you don't freeze your buns off in the winter. Exactly. And I've got my daughter's bedroom above me. Which is actually kind of a disadvantage because I was say, yeah. sometimes I like to train. Like, I've always been a morning lifter. Yep. Since I started doing this like full time, I can train a little bit later in the morning. Okay. But if I do want to come out here bright and early, like I can't be clanging and banging in here because it's going to wake her up. Uh, but at least it gives me more insulation. Mm -hmm. So even when it was like 30 degrees outside, it was about 60 in here, That's amazing. which is great. Because yeah. my last place I had three huge windows basically no insulation, nothing above me, only one interior wall, yeah. and it was frigid. I mean, it's so cold. Well, even with a space heater, space heater only does so much, and then it goes back down to 30 degrees. <laughs> yeah. I feel like such a baby, though, complaining. Like, I see some of these guys in, like, Canada, and they're like... It's like five degrees outside. Yeah, negative five yeah. degrees. <laughs> and they're, they're out there in, like, shorts, and they're like, yeah, it's just a routine day, eh? I've seen, yeah, I, 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 there's a couple of uh, folks that I follow that are doing the exact same thing. No space heater. Yeah. None. Just bars frozen to the, or hands frozen to the bar. Yeah. You know? I know. I okay. know. So I still complain about it. Well, not so much here, but <laughs> I feel like I can't anymore. Yeah, exactly. Oh man, there was a question I was going to ask you about. Um, shoot. Uh, now I just lost it. Um, the space, the the two walls that you had. Ah, uh, no, I'm not going to remember. I'll just ask you about equipment here and I'll come back to the other question. Sure. Um, favorite bar that you have so far or that you've worked, uh, that you've tested out so far, I guess. Oh, so hard. So, so hard. <laughs> um, the Vulcan strength stainless steel, absolute power bar is amazing. Um, very, very nice bar. The rep power bar EX is also similar. It's got a very similar neural. So it's a little bit cheaper. Um, it's also fully stainless. I really do love that bar. Mm -hmm. The Gungnir all rounder is probably the coolest bar. That's mm -hmm. the one we played with, with the, the quality machining and the internal collar, yeah. just from like a engineering perspective, like that's by far the coolest bar in the collection. Yep. Um, and the Mars bar. Yeah. I love the Mars bar. I use it like all the time like i only squat with a straight bar when i'm reviewing it otherwise i'm using this thing now wow yeah it's great great for front squats great for back squats um so yeah those three are they're up are up there but i mean i love several of the other bars too they're all i love all my children <laughs> <laughs> i totally understand well and and you know you talked about it being an addiction it truly is but like you know that you can never really have too many bars in my opinion so oh uh, do you have any any have you uh reviewed any 35 pound women's bars or anything like that or is all most have been 45 pounders it's all been 45 pounders okay um i've thought about reviewing some women's bars so my wife has ehlers danlos syndrome which is um basically extreme hypermobility hmm. um and and just like general laxity in the joints so this type of training, like the type of training, like with your barbell and, and things like that, or they can be hard on her body. She's had like two very invasive knee surgeries. Oh, wow. um, so she does like more low impact type training. Mm -hmm. So I've never really felt the need to get a 35 pound bar. I might in the future, but she's doing like, you know, dumbbells and things like that and the Peloton and et cetera. 
Okay. Um, so maybe one day I'll get a, a female bar. Yeah. Maybe when my daughter gets older, I'll do a female hey, bar. There you go. Yeah. Uh, have you found that? So I have a couple different opinions spinning around in my head on 45 versus 35 pound bars, but I want to know yours. Do you think it's, I know it's IWF approved now with 35 versus 45. Didn't it used to be almost exclusively 45 across the board? Yeah. Like why? I get it. It's easier to grip, all that stuff. Do you get the feeling that it's more of a, uh, like a, a, a fad or something that they just did to, I don't know, appease certain people? Or do you think it's actually useful having a 35 pound bar that's slightly shorter and weighs less? I, I mean, the only way that, in my opinion, it's useful is if you're in a very tight space okay. um, in terms of, like, the width of your room. Like, it's it's made shorter because you might be in a very narrow room and you need some additional room to actually be able to load plates and safely lift. Um, but in terms of, like, having a bigger space, I don't think that there's really much of a purpose for it. It just makes the math more complicated <laughs> and... <laughs> I just, I, you can't load as much weight on there. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's good for like maybe progressing like a junior lifter. Mm -hmm. um, so you got junior bars and then you could maybe progress them up to a 35 pound bar before going up to a 45. Uh, but for the most part, I, unless you're really space constrained, 45 is king and always will be. That's what I figured. I, you know, I, again, I get it as for competitions, but I feel like aside from that, if you're just lifting, you know, any good old 45 pound bar would do the job. Yeah. Um, the American made versus Chinese made. I know I talked to you a little bit about this on the phone, but um, we're, I'm considering coming out with a full line uh, just for our, our gyms, just so we have like a baseline of product, but it would be made in the US. Do you find that consumers really care all that much about, I know there's a po portion of the population that does, but you know, Chinese versus American made. Have you noticed even any differences in, uh, either quality or manufacturing or QC or anything like that that would really make it any better to have an American-made bar versus Chinese? Not necessarily. I think there's the the patriotic component, which I think is the biggest selling point for why you would want to buy American-made. Mm -hmm. But just because something is American-made doesn't mean that it's got better quality control than something coming out of China. Um, what you, you need to have... Sorry, my alarm is going off. <laughs> That's my get up and move alarm. So like every oh, nice. every hour, it's like I sit at my computer writing articles, or whatever. I have an alarm that says, "Okay, try to time to get up and move." Um, but as long as you have like a committed QC staff who who knows what to look for, mm -hmm. then you can get good results no matter where you're manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, so and even still, like you look at Rep Fitness for instance, they import equipment, but they're an American company and they employ hundreds of American people. Okay. Um, so there's also that component. Like, yeah, you're not getting an actual physical American made product, but you're still supporting an American company. Um, so I don't think that it's, I don't think they're going to get necessarily get a better product just because it's American made. I think that you can get a better product because it's American made, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be better made than a import bar if that makes sense yeah no uh, yeah it definitely does uh, the the one beef that i have heard is the quality of steel supposedly is of lower quality when it's imported and again it could be chinese it could be taiwanese it, any number of other countries than than united states steel but i can't i mean if the tensile strength is what the tensile strength is does it really make a difference i think that's also overblown yeah um i mean yes there are different grades of of steel now i'm not i'm, I'm not a professional <laughs> metallurgist or anything like that but there are different grades of steel steel and it just depends on what grade you're using mm -hmm. but just because it's chinese steel doesn't necessarily mean that it's less than american steel yep. um so that's sort of my take on that i mean Look at Aleko, they're they're Swedish. Does that mean that their steel isn't as good as American nah, we steel? We don't trust the Swedes anyway. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, I like the. I'm just looking at these Go Strong uh, cups that you have. Do you have the roller cups around or mine? Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, I've got the. Um, so these are interchangeable. Okay. Through this bolt. Um, so oh. these are the Duffalo blocks. Okay. On there right now. Yep. So if you're using a Buffalo bar or a duffalo bar, mm -hmm. it is a complete game changer because what happens with a normal Jacob is the bar flips on you or it's hard to just 
use. So the duffalo blocks keep it vertical right. the whole time. And it just makes it so much easier. It doesn't a lot of times too, it'll, it'll rot, it'll sway. It'll kick your J cups out and it'll fall to one side. Oh, wow. The duffel box, keep it perfectly centered. It's a total game changer. And then the rollers are, are great too. Yeah. I just have the blocks in there now. Nice. Does everything that they make come, uh, sorry, just talking about American made equipment now, just to make that through line connection, uh, instead <laughs> of completely randomly flipping from things to th- thing to thing. Um, does, uh, uh, is all of their equipment completely and totally custom? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm, they, I'm sure you can buy just like, you can go on the website and be like, I want that one. Yeah. Like, but they don't, they don't have like, I don't think that they're like rogue where they just have it no. off and then they just send it to you. Like it's, it's being made yeah. like it's made to order okay. just like Sornax, just like William strength, et cetera. Right. Um, but their stuff is, it's pretty awesome. It's overbuilt and it's, I mean, it's expensive. I mean, there's no other way to put it, but it's very high quality. So in terms of equipment manufacturers, who do you think is doing the, the rogue is crazy, crazy, crazy in terms of their marketing spend and just how they're getting the word out. But who do you think is doing the best job overall of either manufacturing equipment and getting it out to the, to the consumer or just making a good quality set of equipment that's good for home gyms? Well, I think there's, there's several companies that are making good equipment. Um, obviously you've got rogue Vulcan rep, fringe american barbell they all make good stuff Mm -hmm. it's hard to grade in this environment because it's such a unique situation so some companies are on massive back orders some are having quality control issues some can't keep up with demand it's it's hard in in this environment given everything that's going on to give out a grade per se um but there's several companies who are making quality equipment. It's just a matter of, can I get my hands on it or not? Sure. Which has been by far the biggest pain point for a lot of people. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, yeah. Cause there, there's so many factors that are premium like Kabuki. And then there's the, I want, it's not even a run of the mill, but there's still a high quality manufacturer that makes most of their stuff here in house with rogue. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it seems like even with, even with Titan, I mean, their quality control has gone up significantly. Titan has improved dramatically yeah. since a couple of years ago. Yeah. I mean, when they first hit the scene, they had like welds were breaking all over the place. Like it was not safe to even use their equipment. <laughs> and now it's like they got some really legit pieces and their QC has definitely gotten better. Yeah. So. I have their X3 power rack and pretty much all of their attachments. I just went all in at that point because it was, it was the pandemic. I think they yeah. were one of the only ma- the suppliers that was even, even had anything in stock and, uh, I haven't really looked back. Yeah. It's a three by three rack, you know, I mean, slightly less, but yeah, you know, it's, it's a good rack. <laughs> it's a good rack. You can get a lot of good stuff from Titan. Yeah. And I think it's like my best friend just started his home gym and he always had this idea in his head that it was going to cost him like 30 grand to start a home gym. And I was like, man, no, that's not the case at all. (laughs) And I was like, and I bet this is the perception of like a lot of people, Mm -hmm. maybe not 30 grand, but they probably think that it's prohibitively expensive and it's really not. You can get a great setup for even less than a thousand dollars Buy used stuff. You can get it for a few hundred dollars. Maybe not so much in the pandemic when people were jacking up prices, but still you can get a great home gym setup for relatively cheap and grow it over time, flip, flip stuff and upgrade as time goes on. You know, Rome wasn't built in the day. Like this has been four years in the making right. over four years in the making. So, you know, just be along for the journey. It's just a fun, it's a fun ride. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you've uh, been building the, uh, the business and, you know, getting into the routine with all of that, what is a typical, if I can ask you this, what, what does a typical day look like for you? Is it kind of vary every day? Are you continuously, I know you're continuously writing articles and that's a main staple, but what's a typical day for you? Yeah. So the past like two and a half months, I've been full bore, like laser focused on my web project, okay. which I've been working on for like 18 months. Wow. It's actually one of the reasons why I left my job was because I realized that I was going to be working on it for another 18 months. And it was just like one of those things where I've spent hundreds of hours on it. And when I was working my full-time job before this and, you know, putting 80 hours in a week and having the family and also trying to just maintain Garage Gym Lab, which is like with regular articles, Mm -hmm. trying to even get this project going was 
so painfully slow and i was like i don't i just have a hard time seeing the the light at the end of the tunnel for like actually launching so for the past like two and a half months i've been full steam ahead on that so it's like i wake up i you know work out which has also also been limited i haven't been working out as much over the last two and a half months just because i've been so focused um but then it's like from morning until i'm until i'm done like you know i try to be done at like five so i can spend time with my family um but it's been it's been that so that's been a typical day up to this point but i've got three of the four done so just for your listeners the project is like a choose your own equipment picker is how i'm sort of calling it right now i don't know what i'm going to call it at, at some point sure. but i was i get the same questions like you know pretty frequently like what's the best barbell mm. which is like very open ended of course mm-hmm. or like I'm looking for a multi-purpose bar that's made in America that doesn't have a center neural. So it's like a very targeted question. So now you can basically come onto the website and you can fill out a 30 second survey, answer a few questions, and then right in the browser, it gives you a list of every, not literally every, but a lot of the products that fit your criteria. Mm -hmm. Uh, So if you say you want an American made power bar with aggressive knurling and you care a lot about oxidation resistance but you don't want to spend more than five hundred dollars then that's what you're going to get so i've got that for bars i've got it for benches and by the time your listeners hear this i'll have it for plates i'm hopefully going to release that today maybe tomorrow um and then i've got racks after that which is like oh get up and move (laughs) um which is going to be like a total bear so i'm actually gonna take a step back i need to like give myself a a break yeah because Quite frankly, my eyes are like bleeding at this point. It's a lot of equipment. It's hundreds and hundreds of products and it's just, it's making me go a little bit crazy right now. So I'm going to step back, film film some videos, write some like normal articles, Mm -hmm. and then just like do this, you know, a few times of, you know, maybe an hour a day for a little bit and then hopefully have racks out by like May 15th or something. Uh, how are you doing the, the, are you doing data feeds directly in as in, uh, you know, uh, linked to whatever, is it just have to be updated manually? It's manual. Ooh. Um, so you can do that. I'm sure technically, but it'd be very complicated and probably very expensive. And I'm an Excel spreadsheet nerd, so it's pretty easy for me. Yep. Um, but I mean, really products don't change much. Like the specs are the specs. Like it's price basically that you're adjusting Mm -hmm. and you can do that, you know, carve out a day a month and like just go in through and check prices. So until I can get something a little bit more automated, I'll just do it that way. Mm -hmm. Um, But for now it's just, it's getting the content to the, to the people. That's really what they care about. It's like, just give me the products that fit my criteria. I'm tired of like going to 20 different websites and trying to figure it out. Like if you can just give it to me in one, area and I can look at all the companies and make a determination of which is best for me. Like that's, that's the intent behind it. Are you planning on also introducing user reviews to each of those? So where, um, somebody, uh, you know, says of the recommendations here is the favorite bar based on what users think. Yeah, you can do that. Oh, you, can, uh, okay. yeah, you can do that right now. So okay. if you go into the product, you can actually write a review yourself. Okay. Um, and then I, We'll have my review on there if I've done one. Yeah. And then I've got a uh, representative sample of reviews from the manufacturer's site. It's wow. parsed out by positive and negative. Oh, wow. um, so you can go on there and get a high level view of like what people are actually saying like at the manufacturer's site. Mm-hmm. And then you can leave your own review and then you can read my review. Wow. So that's extremely comprehensive. <laughs> very nice. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> um, what does your... Uh, going back to a little bit to the personal side, um, you lift. Mm-hmm. We can all tell. Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. You don't get 165 pounds just by not lifting, guys. Yes. <laughs> and I, I love I, I love that because uh, I've I've done videos before and and I'm reviewing equipment or not reviewing equipment, just talking about equipment that we have in our warehouse, and um, I get the same comments like what the heck is a Prius doing reviewing like a like a uh, you know a Hummer essentially <laughs> <laughs> um but what, so what is your workout regimen in the mornings you, are you on a specific program are you big fans of like uh all right barbell medicine or any of those guys yeah so I've for like five years I did pretty much strictly powerlifting training mm-hmm. um I've sort of 
gone away from that. I felt like I was like getting into like that box and it was just kind of, I love powerlifting. I love the sport. I love the training, but it was getting a little dry for me mm-hmm. and it just was kind of sucking out the life and the enjoyment for me. Um, so I talked to my good buddy, Ray Zingler, um, from Zingler strength and he sort of helped me craft like the general bones of what I use now in terms of my programming, but it's still based around the squat bench, deadlift and overhead press. Um, I'm just not in that powerlifting box. So I have flexibility to, you know, do different rep schemes, do different volume schemes, introduce some cool accessory movements that I like to do, do a lot of carries, um, things like that, that I wasn't really doing before. Um, so I'm just trying to experiment like into, into some other things. Mm -hmm. And for me, at least it's been a lot more enjoyable. Have you ever thought about reviewing comprehensively over the course of, I don't even know how long that would take training programs? No, no, that's not my, I'll never do it. (laughs) No, it's not my cup of tea. There's a lot smarter people out there than, than I am when it comes to programming and, and things like that. So I'm not a specialized, you know, I'm not a certified strength and conditioning specialist or anything like that. So I don't pretend to be, and I won't dabble in that space. Gotcha. Yep. That's totally fair. Um, the, uh, oh man, sorry. I keep losing my train of thought. Um, sorry. Give me one second. I gather my thoughts. What, if you had to give somebody some advice on, um, in this environment where it's extraordinarily hard to actually get the kind of equipment that everybody really wants. Um, do you have any recommendations on, um, whether it's used or new, uh, a a good setup, uh, you know, barn plates is obviously a great place to start, but you know, um, do you have a recommendation on, uh, you can start here, you can work out with X and just get the job done. Yeah. I mean, it, it really, depends on your training style. Mm -hmm. Um, typically I call it the core four, you know, your rack, your bench, your plates, and your bar. Mm -hmm. If you can have those four things and you're, you're set, like you're good for a long time. Um, if you can just get a few kettlebells, you can do a lot with kettlebells. You can do a lot with an adjustable dumbbell set. So if you're really strapped for availability or space, you can start there. But if you can find that kind of stuff, even on the used market today, you're still, you can still find deals and the price gouging isn't nearly what it was in the summer when things were going for like three and four X retail. Um, so you can still get some good deals out there now, but typically I recommend that people start with a barbell and some plates because you don't necessarily need a rack to actually lift weights. You don't need a bench technically to actually lift weights. You can do a lot just with the bar and some plates start there, get a rack, get a bench, And then from there, you can fill out what you might want or need based on your training, Um, whether that's a lat pull down or some dumbbells or kettlebells, whatever, to sort of fill out your training. Gotcha. I know there's a lot of DIY stuff that people can also do. um, And you've talked a little bit about that, I uh, I know. Um, Is uh, in terms of, oh, one thing you were mentioning earlier to me when we were just doing the the tour was... um, there's a garage gym competition coming up that I think you're, you said you were involved with. Um, are you part of the, part of the sponsor or just part of the council? Part so, of the council. Yeah. So there's like six or seven of us, okay. um, who just come together and like strategize about the event, uh, line up the sponsors for the event and just, you know, try to put the pieces together to make it run efficiently. Um, but yeah, this year is going to be awesome. This is the third, uh, annual garage gym competition. Uh, last year, I think we had, I think I told you, I think we have 500 participants and we had, I want to say like $10,000 maybe of prizes. Mm-hmm. This year we're going to have over $30,000 of prizes. This is going to be fantastic and anybody can win. It's not a who can lift the most weight competition. It's, it's really an all inclusive. If you can get a broomstick and put some weight on the ends and do a squat, then there you go. You're in the competition. Um, so I think it's going to be really cool. There's going to be amazing companies participating this year. And, uh, yeah, I'm really excited. So that's going to be in May and then, uh, garage gym competition on Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, garage gym competition.com, et cetera, is where you can read more about it. Okay. 
Uh, can you give everybody just a brief summary of what the, the are there weight classes and things just to differentiate like uh, uh, the competitors or is general requirements? Yeah, so it's it's really, it's not so much that. It's not like putting people in, in brackets. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a free for all basically. Oh, okay. Yeah, you just, just lift weights and post it on Instagram and you might win want some money or some oh equipment okay yeah so basically it's just a and there's like there's like most improved i think there's top 5 male top 5 female if okay. i remember correctly i could be misremembering now um, but yeah it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty cool man yeah no kidding are you involved with any of those other any other type of competitions or thing or have you have you been able to go to any events like that this year no with covid and everything no i know there's been some but i haven't i haven't been um, have you, have you been to any in the past? Cause I, there's a, I know fit cons coming up in, uh, Texas here soon. Um, and also in Florida or is it Florida or somewhere else? Um, so I, yeah, I, I haven't been, been to any trade shows or expos or anything like that. Okay. Summer strong from Sornex, mm-hmm. um, is awesome. So I go there every year. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's it. Okay. Where, where is that located? Is Columbia. it, is it isn't here. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. Very nice. They're HQ. Well, Lexington. Okay. South Carolina, which is Columbia. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, have your neighbors um, said anything to you about what is this crazy guy doing? Uh, all those reviews with the. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> garage door I, open. I've like, if I have the door open, like some people will walk by and they'll uh, give me the kind of like, sec- what the heck is going on in there? Um, and then I, I've gotten, I've met some people. Like, we're pretty new to the neighborhood. I mentioned to you, we've been here since August. Yep. But like during Halloween, like I met some people. And they're like, oh, yeah, you're the guy with the garage gym. And I'm like, yeah, how'd you know? And like, oh, yeah, we walk by and <laughs> we, we see it. So it's kind of neat from that perspective. But, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there, there's people like looking out their windows like, what is this guy doing walking with like an earthquake bar over his head down the street? Like, <laughs> what, what is this? Those things are crazy. <laughs> um, have, um, oh, oh, I did want to ask a uh I did want to ask a, a controversial question. What is the worst piece of equipment you have ever come across? Well, I've had this question before and I have a pretty good idea of what I'm getting. Okay. And I only want to, I review equipment that I want to use. Yeah. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to buy something or receive something that like I think is a gimmick or, or anything like that. Okay. So I really don't have anything in here that I'm like, Oh, that's, that's terrible. Like I don't recommend that at all. Mm. Um, I mean, there's been some products where it's like, yeah, that could use some more improvements relative to others. But for the most part, I, I have a pretty good idea of what I'm getting and it's usually cool. Gotcha. Yeah. Anything that you haven't reviewed that you would just say absolutely stay away from. I know there's, there's, there's different brands and stuff like Weir and, and cap and stuff out there that, you know, make super yeah. cheap stuff, but yeah, I mean, like, in terms of, like, actual equipment, um, nothing's really sticking out. Let me noodle on that one a little bit. Yeah. Um, okay. But, yeah, I mean, there's some shady quality out there for sure Yeah. that I would steer clear from. And you can usually tell yeah. <laughs> just by looking at pictures that that's inferior compared to some of the others, mm-hmm. more recognizable and reputable brands. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um. And the website, where can people go to, to find you? Yes, I'm on Instagram at Garage Gym Lab, Garage Gym Lab dot com, Garage Gym Lab, Lim, Gym Lab on YouTube, basically Garage Gym Lab anywhere. Okay. That's where I'm, that's where you can find me. Very cool. And uh, any, uh, aside from your big project that's coming up, um, any other big news or announcements that you've got in the pipeline that are going to be going on here for you? That's uh, That's been my core focus and... I've got one more phase of the of the four, so um, from here it's just make more make more content, make more videos, make more articles, write more articles, and uh, I'm sure I'll have some big announcements at some point. Nothing imminent yet. Sure. Are you planning on growing this to the point where you're going to have your full a full set of staff and a videographer and the whole nine yards? Or are you just envisioning just sure. continuing to be? Yeah, maybe. I mean, <laughs> right now it's a solo endeavor, and it will be for the foreseeable future. But yeah. if it gets to that point, then that would be cool. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I think I'm going to um, end our podcast here, but uh, I really wanted to say thank you for letting me come out here and just 
not only pick your brain about your amazing home gym, but also like interview for the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you came and I appreciate you inviting me to be on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely, man. This has been Adam from Garage Gym Lab as Ashton from FreedomCast. Um, We'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. See you guys. Thank you for listening. Please give FreedomCast a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. It would mean a lot, a lot, a lot to our business. Plus, it's fun to read y'all's reviews. See you next time.